Hello there. In today's video, I welcome you to my childhood in various boxes and tiny packaging. Join me in this snackaging. It's black hoodie, I'm back cooking these goodies. Look at these views from cooking these foods. Yeah. So as you can see, the gang's all here. Now I say that very loosely because I couldn't procure everything that I snacked on as a child. This is just a mm, decent amount of what was you know, largely going in my mouth as a child during snackish times. And uh, my local juvenile snack dealer only had these things. I couldn't find or source any other materials. Maybe in the future we'll do that. But for now, we do have a pretty legit crew on, on deck. So I'm going to go through each and every one of these one by one. Uh, we'll do a little taste test and even like, you know, just refer back to them in, in my childlike memory, my current, how I enjoy them currently now, and just their status among snacks via, you know, your, your childhood crew. Okay, so off to the side they go, but I'll pull them in one by one. Okay, so these largely break down into two categories, fruit snacks, aka sugary gummy things, and then kind of more real foodish breakfast desserty type cereal bar things. Uh, the, 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 the first ones being, when I was growing up, it was a Nutrigrain bar, but now it is, you know, it's a cereal bar, which a Nutrigrain bar was, but these are by President's Choice, so they can't rip off Nutrigrain. But I used to get Nutrigrain bars, predominantly strawberry, so I picked these up because, let's be honest, if you've ever had President's Choice products, you know that they are legit. So I'm pretty sure we've all had one of these. The whole thing about the Nutrigrain bar or this cereal bar, this was basically the health nut of the group. Parents were always trying to push onto you a Nutrigrain bar uh, into your lunch and shit in, in, uh, in, to replace other bullshitty snacks. Uh, I don't understand how this got to be, you know, largely regarded as the healthier option, but I mean, it's carbs and sugar. Ultimately, is what it boils down to if we're getting scientific with it. But uh, I will say this. When they first came out, I was into them. After a while, they get to be... I don't know. They got a bad rap in the playground, let's just call it. Or in the cafeteria trade embargo. You know, you would go to school and lunch and you would trade snacks. Very rarely, like, this was low on the totem pole in the trading zone. Like, kids just didn't desire to trade you for a Nutrigrain bar. You were pretty much stuck with your Nutrigrain bar. And it's like, you'll eat it when the hunger strikes, for real, you know? So, good bar. Do like them. Kind of fig newtony in nature, essentially. But it was a standard. My parents were shoving nutrients down my throat consistently. Next up, Rice crispy Squares. Snap, crackle, and pop. Now, as a cereal, a little bit inferior in my opinion, unless you sprinkle sugar over the top. I mean, let's be honest, all sugars were even better with sugar sprinkled over the top, even the sugary cereals, right? But, uh, I mean, a Rice Krispie Square is a classic treat that many moms and grandmothers made at home over, you know, eons and centuries of, through the dinosaur ages, right? Like, even mother pterodactyls were whipping up these guys. Now, the difference is, though, between this one and your grandmother's is it's always consistently the same consistency, right? It has that perfect goo and chew. Uh, <laughs> and it's always got this very unique flavor that 
I've never been able to detect in a homemade Rice Krispie Square. It just hits different. They are very, very good. I really love them. And uh, truth be told, they used to make a cereal called Rice Krispie Square something or other. I don't know. It came in like a teal box or like a winter green box. I used to sell it in the States. Fun fact for you, I lived in the States in Florida actually for two months. During my parents' divorce, my grandparents took me down there or me and my siblings down there and we lived um, in Florida for like two months. And I became fully addicted to that Rice Krispies cereal. So in my adulthood, I have at some point or another busted them up into like little pieces like this. Like got in a box of these, bust them up, throw them in milk, crush them. Stupid good. Also a good time to point out, that's why I'm making this video today. Keeping it light because it's actually my grandma's birthday, the one that took me to Florida. And I'm going to her house in about two hours to have dinner with her. So um, just got me thinking about my childhood, got me thinking what could I shoot that's chill and simple and easy and not gonna fill me up too much and be a little bit of a different, interesting style of content. Next up, dips. This is a caramel nut. I can only find a caramel nut. I don't usually get a caramel nut. I usually just like to get just caramel. And to be honest, President's Choice makes the best caramel dip, in my opinion. But I mean, come on. We all, who didn't have a granola bar, right? Now there's always the, the two classes of granola bars. There's the non-chocolate dipped. Well, these are the chocolate dipped, obviously. But there's the non-chocolate dipped. Those were, once again... If they had some chocolate chips and some marshmallows, if they were the Rocky Road s'mores, you might be able to trade it off. But these are the kingpins. Like if you have a, a chocolate dipped granola bar, you're much more likely to get a better trade. Now this is an item that I wouldn't even trade, to be honest. I would just keep and eat. Because it's a good one, in my opinion. I like these. They're delicious. I mean, it's a chromosome away from a chocolate bar, really. Right? I don't know how these ever got passed off as like a healthy, good thing to put into lunch. But... That's the entire brainwash of all these kids' snacks, by the way. All these children's snacks are not, uh, in my opinion, not healthy food at all. <laughs> so, really, like, uh, the big boys are just peddling sugar to the children. And we wonder why they're popping off in class. Can't sit still, can't be quiet, laughing, talking, etc. And then they call it ADD, and then Big Pharma steps in, and they sell you the Ritalin. So, they're all in cahoots. It's a cycle. It's a shmishmirish -shmir if you will. I don't know that for a fact. I think people are just trying to drive sales. And uh, they do that through colorful packaging, and a delicious thing called sugar that is more addictive than heroin, studies have found. So we're going to step into that territory now, like the real, the real sugar. In comes a very instant classic, the fruit roll-up. Now, I couldn't get the box that I wanted. I wanted the Tropical Twist, which has all the colors in it. This one is a segregated one, I guess we'll call it. There's only two colors per roll. I don't know, this one's blazing blue and green. There you go. 
go. Blazing blue and green. I don't know. It says it somewhere around there. There you go. And uh, there's a known tactic to these. And I think every person who's ever eaten one probably knows it, knows what I'm about to do, at least if you're from my time. Now, I don't know if these parlor tricks got passed down from generation to generation or not. But as kids, to be cool, you used to, you know, these, these, these little food snack trends fads and things like punching in boobless on the calculator. You guys know about boobless on the calculator. Uh, this isn't very easy to unwrap, so not shout out to this wrapping system, but uh, okay, we're having mild, minor issues, but it's a saggy, droopy, sugary sheet of colors and fake flavors. Now, if you didn't do this as a child, you were not cool and you weren't prepared for the future. If you never fingered a fruit roll out, <laughs> then you just weren't living. You know what I mean? So what you do is you wrap your disgusting grubby paw in this plastic hair attractor called a fruit roll up and you just perform Felicio on it. <laughs> mm-hmm. Real shit. We used to do this as kids. Sometimes you bite a chunk off. Sometimes you suck that bitch dry right to the bone. Right to the phalange. Okay. Now, I'm going to save you that experience. I'm sure most of you don't want to see me uh, blow my finger until it's done. So I'll just pull it off and eat it. Now that's the alternative way. You could also crumple it into a ball, pop it in, suck it or chew it till it's done. I prefer the second way. Just turn it into a this type of thing. Kind of takes the shape of the roof of your mouth and molds into your tongue. And then you just enjoy the sugary goodness of it. It is delicious. Mm -hmm. All right, next up, in that same exact vein, really all of these snacks are just the same thing in a variant shape, form, whatever. And this is a fruit o'long now they call it, but in my day, the true OGs will remember fruit by the foot. It's almost like, it's almost the same thing as when like uh, beasties went to beast wars or whatever, that shit, you know? It's one of the same, it's just they rebranded the name. I think fruit by the foot is way cooler than fruit, fruit o'long, like fruit o'long sounds just stupid to me. Okay, maybe these aren't the tropical ones. I thought they were tropical, but apparently we're just ripping a uh, a blue and red blend. So I would imagine some sort of a blue raspberry with a cherry or a strawberry. And that's pretty cool, right? Look at that. You just roll her out, but it's the same thing. Now, I'm sure there's tactical ways to go ahead and eat this. Holy shit, she's long. And then at the end, it does this thing where it's kind of locked together and you gotta un undo that and get the last little bits. But maybe that's supposed to be the pull tab, right? That's where it pops off. Now for me, I was always this guy. I was straight up lizard boy. Like, just... you know how lizards catch flies? That's how I do. And you can bust it off. Chew it. 
two it down. Do what you got to do. Uh, personally, uh, this wasn't one that you wrap around your finger. Once again, you could usually ball it up if you want. Right? Just take it. Make it a ball. Pop it in. And you're good. But usually, I was a lizard man. Boy, at the time. And tried to savor the flavor. I will say this. I think you get more bang for your buck. The fruit by the foot. It feels like at least two times more than a fruit roll up. So while we're on the topic of the same things dressed as other things, gushers. Now I'll say this. That's my catchphrase lately. I'll say this. Gushers are a top tier champion in my opinion. They were probably one of my absolute favorite things as a kid. I just feel like the packaging was so fucking cool and attractive. Just the, the fact that they squirt. <laughs> wow. And, uh, you know, I don't know, just, they just had, and you know what, to be honest, I'll say this. <laughs> I keep saying that. Um, what I'll equate it to is their shapes. Uh, the indoctrination. <laughs> they just come out in one unit. The indoctrination of video games and the crossover to food in terms of manipulating my mind into liking what I liked. And that is the gem shaped you know jewel shaped nature of the gusher because in a lot of video games you like collect jewels and gems and i was playing a lot of shit like that back then so you pop inside and you get that juice so Visually intriguing. Seems rewarding to the mind because of jewels and gems. Am I just psychoanalyzing my childhood <laughs> through corporate manipulation of my snacks? I guess so. Um, the texture of them is great though. Flavor of them is really good. And the variation, like the fact that you get a little juice hit, you know, is good. So these were super high on my list. And those were like a golden trade in the calf, absolutely. Now, like I was saying, these, these aren't all the snacks. There's lots more. There's... There's Lunchables. Lunchables almost move into lunch territory, though. Hence the name Lunchables. Now, I view them as a snack. Even back then, I kind of viewed them as a snack. But some kids would bring them legit for their lunch. I never understood it. They always seemed in snack category to me. Then there's the handy snacks, which are like the Cheese Whiz up in the top, the Red Stick, and the crackers or the breadsticks. Those were dope. Those were one of my favorites. Because I love cheesy salty carbs. There's corn nuts. There's, I don't know, there's lots more. These were just some mainstays in my realm. So we might have to do a part two to this. Last on the docket, it's one of my absolute favorites, is the Scooby-Doo 
fruit snack. Now, the thing about the Scooby-Doo fruit snack, and what's annoying me is that I bought these a little while ago to do this video and my grubby little paws got into some of these boxes, right? Of course they would. And I went in and I think it's because they're Halloween, but maybe they've changed the recipe. I was pissed. The Scooby-Doo fruit snacks were top notch when they came out. I don't know if you can see, see in there, yeah. Um, now, most of the fruit snacks were this like translucent style fruit snack. But in the Scoobies, the blue one, the one that hit the most different, and every kid that had these knows, the blue one used to be solid state. You couldn't see through it, almost like like foam looking almost. And the and because of the nature of its texture and the flavor that it packed being blue was otherworldly. But now it seems the blue has just joined the regular gang. Now I don't know if it's because it's this, this spooky Halloween pack or if they don't have the blue hitters anymore. Somebody in the comments, please tell me if those blue hitters have been discontinued. If you're a man child or a woman child like me and you still eat these currently in your life and you know what happened to the, to, to the blue hitters, I'd love to know. Or if you have children and you keep an eye out for those blue hitters. I'd also love to know, but Velma would agree, I believe, that these aren't the same Scoobies that I used to have. Oh, sorry, that was Daphne. Velma's, of course, orange. My bad, Daff. I don't know. It may be this, uh, this Halloween pack, but these just aren't the same as they used to be. The Scoobies used to be top tier. Top tier, but stops here. <laughs> it does stop here, though. I gotta go to my grandma's for dinner. And I gotta brainstorm what else from my juvenile self I could go over in the future here. If that's a thing that you would even want, I don't know. Let me know down below. But I just thought it'd be a little bit of an interesting video, possibly a little bit funny, a little bit entertaining, and a little bit nostalgic for those who could connect. So until the next one, you know what to do. <laughs> Eat good, live well. Stay true.